Hi everybody, I want to give an introduction to the City and Guilds Level 2 Diploma, Site Carpentry and Bench Joinery. Now, these two uh, courses, these two aspects of courses are complementary to one another. There's a great deal of crossover between the two um, areas of work. So Site Carpentry and Bench Joinery um, are very much linked, uh, even though people tend to focus on one or the other. Uh, I was brought up um, in my apprenticeship to focus on both. We did both site carpentry and bench joinery at the same time. Uh, I went on to do an advanced craft in purpose made joinery. So, um, but the important thing is this is going to be the first of a series of videos for the benefit of my students. It's going to be a teaching podcast. That's what they're going to be. They're going to be short, less than 30 minutes, definitely less than 30 minutes at a time. Now we're going to have notes available um, and we're going to have a question sheet. So every time you see a video, there'll be some notes and there'll be a question sheet in which you're going to be able to go through it and resubmit that to us to enable us to know that you really have um, taken some of this in. Um, now we're not going to read from the actual book, uh, the, um, the City and Guilds uh, Level 2 Diploma book. We're not going to read from it, but we are going to comment on it and we're going to be making applications and illustrations of all the things contained therein. Uh, this, is not going to, this is not about you just getting through it. <laughs> this isn't punishment. You don't <laughs> we don't want you to just sit there being bored. We want you to engage in it. We don't want you to just be going through the motions and sitting there watching something. We want you to actually be learning something. That's our objective. So hopefully we'll make it interesting and hopefully we'll make it humorous at times. Uh, this teaching that you're receiving is probably the most important teaching that you're going to be receiving in your lifetime because it's going to be the very alphabet of your trade skills and it's going to be the basis of your future success. Now I want to outline the course as it comes out in this um, um, book. The outline is that the first unit covered is 201, which is health and safety. Now some of you will have already have done some health and safety, either in level one or in other courses that you um, have been on. But uh, this is going to be very specific to the trade. So it's very important that you understand. And the health and safety and principles of building construction are identical whether it's in level one or level two. You don't have a lower level of health and safety for level one. The health and safety is the same for all. The second unit then, as we just mentioned, is going to be unit 202, which is the principles of building construction and uh, information and communication. Now, every student really needs to understand how things basically are built. So this is the principles of building construction and also it's all about information and communication. When you build something, when you make something, you're not going to be the person that designed it. You're going to be the person that makes it according to a plan, according to some instructions and whether you're on a building site or whether you're in a workshop, um, you're going to be required to be able to understand plans. You're going to be able to understand written information and you're going to have to learn how to make proper communication uh, with all of the other people that you're involved with at work. The next unit then is unit 211 and this is how to set up and operate a circular saw. There will be other tools mentioned as well but the circular saw is the foundation. In 1974 the regulations came out for the circular saw machine and this was revolutionary. Up to that time there were horrendous accidents that were occurring um, around the country with people doing woodwork uh, with great huge saws turning without any guards and without any safety features. So you're going to learn how to operate a circular saw safely and how to operate it in such a way that you're going to be able to produce the necessary things that your employer wants you to do. Now the next unit is uh, unit two, 212 and 213 and this is setting out and marking bench joinery products. 
Um, now, most sight people will turn off at this point and say, we don't need to learn this, but you'd be surprised how in, on a sight you will often be required to learn, uh, you'll be able to do certain bench operations. Um, and the same is true with people who are in workshops. They often will have to go and do something on site. So it's important to go through these units, even if you don't necessarily major on them. And the most important unit is going to be how to set out and mark out bench joinery products. The second unit which goes alongside that is 214, which is how to manufacture bench joinery products. Now these are products uh, like say a window or a door or a cupboard or a unit or a staircase. It's how these things are actually made. Now you don't need to know everything about it and you'll certainly not know everything about it because these things are, ve are better experienced than talked about. However, this is going to be the basics. This is going to be the basic outline of how things are fitted together. Now the units 207, 208, 209 and 2010 are definitely in the area of site carpentry. Uh, but the bench guys need to take note of all this too because you very often will be called upon to do something on a site. The first one is 207 which is first fixing and it's first fixing in relation to flooring and roofing. So we're going to go into flooring and roofing not in great depth, but in sufficient depth for you to be able to really just understand how floors are put together and how roofs are put together. 208 is also first fixing. This time it's about frames and partitions and staircases. Okay, so that's the point of 208. 209 is all about second fixing. Now second fixing is everything that takes place in a building after the plasterers have completed their work. Everything first fixing is before the plastering work and everything second fixing is after the plastering work. So you've got skirting and architrave, you've got doors, you've got window boards and you've got lots of other fitments that need to go in afterwards. Um, and then two, oh, sorry, two, 210, unit 210, is about carpentry maintenance. Now this is a complete trade all in its own. And it's all about how things are repaired, how things are fixed, how locks are taken out and new ones put in. So this is a very interesting unit. In fact, for quite some time I worked alone only in this particular field of site carpentry maintenance. So there we are. Now we're going to be starting at the beginning. There's nothing that we're going to be teaching you that's obsolete. Everything is important. We're not going to be going through this slowly. We're going to be going through this fairly quickly. So if you happen to have the um, City and Guilds Site Carpentry and Bench Joinery um, textbook, then that's really great. But we won't be following it as such in terms of reading it. But we will be touching on all the subjects. The first thing you'll notice if you open your book is that you have a trade dictionary. You know, there is a tremendous amount of unique language, unique words that are used by the building trade and which you will need to become familiar with. And now what we need now, people who read dictionaries are very boring people, but you, this is one that you really will need to read or it's one that you'll need to refer to. And you need to learn these words. These, this is the language. These are the words of your trade. Um, and uh, if you discover that there's words that we talk about that you don't know about, then you can go back to the trade dictionary and look it up. Or you can go to the index at the very back of the book and look up the word. It's very important that you don't miss what words mean. If when you're reading a sentence or listening to a sentence, if a particular word pops up that you don't know about, then it will stop you in your tracks and you'll not be able to comprehend what's being talked about. So it's very important, very important that you begin to learn the words of your trade. So we're going to begin straight away. We're going to we're going to start right at the beginning and we're going to follow the book just as it is. Some of it you may already know and some of it you won't know. But we're going to follow the book as it is and we're going to start our first session um, after this on the health and safety unit, which is unit 201, health and safety and welfare in construction. 
that's the one we're looking at next. So we look forward to catching up with you next time. Look forward to that. Bye for now.